example, I don't know, three is it? Okay, so example. So this one's a, logarithm, a logarithmic equation. And so I start out with the logarithm of base seven of three x minus two is equal to two. Now you could really raise it to any base, but it would get really complicated if you didn't use seven. I'm gonna raise this to the base of seven and this to the base of seven. I'm gonna do it to both sides. Now you could, if you wanted to, change this to uh, change this logarithm to uh, this logarithmic equation into um, exponential equation. You could say, well, my base seven is gonna be equal to this thing, or excuse me, raised to that guy, and it's gonna be equal to three x minus two. And that's just going back and forth from, uh, what did I usually write? B raised to the y equals x, going back and forth from exponential form to logarithmic form, log of base b of x is equal to y. Okay, that's just going back and forth. So I took this thing and changed it into this thing, okay? Another way to go, and that's all we've been doing in the past. I'm gonna show you this other way that is kind of the same thing. At least you get the same results. If I raise the left-hand side to seven, I get log seven, three x minus two. Oh, and by the way, I actually prefer the other way. Uh, I naturally go switch back and forth from exponential logarithmic form, as opposed to raising both sides to a base uh, or taking natural log of both sides. I don't often do that. I do this typically. And so uh, this one just looks uh, structurally exactly like, uh, with the exception of the complex argument, um, it looks exactly like our uh, logarithmic form. Now these two things, uh, as we, as I, I don't have a better way. They're inverse. They're inverse functions of each other. I guess that is the best way. They're inverse functions of it. So they undo each other. Okay. So undoing each other, this becomes just that: three x minus two. And on the right-hand side, I have seven squared. That's just a number. We know that's 49. And so I have three x minus two equals 49. I'm gonna add two to both sides. I get 51, divide both sides by three, and I get 17, and that's my answer. So uh, a couple different ways you can go on that guy, but uh, pick one and have fun. Of course, have fun, it's math. So then uh, we have another example. I didn't write example, so it kind of confused me there for a second. So log base five of x is equal to log base five of two x plus three minus log base five of two x minus three. Now we could do some crazy raise both sides to the five, but there's a problem here. It's gonna be uh, significantly, significantly complicated because we have two terms on the right. And so we, had have, we would have five raised to the whole thing. You can't raise these individually to five, cannot. Um, so, you, so you would want to sort of find a way to join these and make them a single term. And we should have that because of the logarithmic properties. This is the log, two logarithms being subtracted that have the same base. And so I can use the property, uh, how do we state that? the log of the quotient is equal to the difference of the logs. And so I have log base five of x, I'm not doing anything on the left-hand side, and I'm gonna end up with logarithm base five of two x plus three over two x minus three on the right. If you want, we can box or bracket that. So remember, it's the logarithm of the quotients is equal to the difference of the logarithms, okay? So now I have one term on this side, one term on that side. If I raise both sides to the base of five, I'm gonna be left with, and I'll, I guess I'll, I'm trying to save a little time, but if I raise this to the five and raise that to the five, right, these guys undo each other, they're inverse functions of each other, and I get x equals two x plus three over two x minus three. So I got rid of all the logarithm exponent stuff but I have these x's and the ugly one that's in this denominator. So I'm gonna have to not have this in the denominator. So how do I make sure that the denominator is equal to one instead of this thing? 
hopefully you're, hopefully you're telling me right now that you want to multiply both sides by 2x minus 3 because 2x minus 3 divided by 2x minus 3 is equal to 1. And so if I do that on both sides, I get, let's distribute this x, 2x squared minus 3x equals, this equals 1, and get, I'm left with on the right hand side 2x plus 3. I know that algebra is not necessarily the, the uh, first thing that you think of or see, but um, hopefully you can get there. And now I can start uh, solving, uh, getting one side to be equal to zero so I can solve this quadratic, either by using the quadratic formula or by factoring. And we'll go through factoring because it's a little short review of factoring by grouping. I won't explain every step. We'll just uh, go through it so you can see it. I'm gonna subtract two x from both sides. I'm also gonna subtract three from both sides. And so I get two x squared. Negative three minus two is minus five x minus three equals this is equal to zero, that's equal to zero, and so I get my zero that I'm looking for. And I'm gonna factor by grouping. And I'm not talking about a large fish in the depths of the ocean. That would be the grouper. Um, so can I factor this? Take the two, multiply it times the negative three, I get negative six. Factors of negative six, one, negative five, excuse me, one and negative six, negative one and six, uh, 2 and negative 3, negative 2 and 3. Of these four pairs, do any of them add up to negative 5? Well, yes, the very first one. So remember, in factoring by grouping, this tells us how to split the middle term, not, it does not give me the two uh, constants in my binomials because this is not a 1. So I'm left with 2x squared minus, how do we want to split this up? Doesn't matter, I don't think, but uh, it never matters. It works out no matter what. But I was trying to think of which one would be easier for you to see. So uh, 6x minus 3. So this guy right here, those two terms, if you add them together, are the same as this. So in other words, this expression on the left of the side of the equation is the same as it was above. And so now, I don't care about what happened up there as long as I did it correctly. I'm going to group, let's see if we get a different color. I'm going to group these two terms and factor them with a, by, by factoring the greatest common factor. I'm going to take these two and group them and do the same. So greatest common factor here is 2, no, excuse me, just x. And so I'm going to factor out an x, and I'm left with whatever. I'm going to write that in a different color. And over here, I'm going to factor out a negative 3, and I'll be left with some other. And so let's do that in orange. And so what I'm left with over here is x, excuse me, 2x plus 1. And over here, I'm left with 2x plus 1. And that's all equal to 0. So please note that this is the same as that. So I'm going to factor this away from the 3, and I'm going to factor this from the x, such that I'm left with 2x plus 1 times x minus 3. The quantity equals 0. And so how do I do this guy? Remember, I take x minus 3, set it equal to 0, and I get x equals 3. And then separately, I take 2x plus 1, set it equal to 0, and get x is equal to negative 1 half. Okay, so here's the gist. Remember, for logarithmic functions, we're just going to use a base logarithmic function, uh, generic, I should say. Uh, they look sort of like this. And they go through this point, which would be 1 comma 0, barring any lateral or vertical shifting. And if it's a decreasing logarithmic function, it would look like that. And it would also go through 1 comma 0, unless, of course, there are some vertical or horizontal shifting. But what's the issue here? There are no negative values out here, right? There are no negative values for the generic. So there's a restriction on our domain. What we haven't accounted for is the restriction of the domain of these original logarithmic functions because uh, we got rid of them. We removed them from the equation. And this part doesn't take that into account. So our solutions, x equals negative 1 half and 3, will solve this quadratic. But the question is, is, are they valid to solve our original logarithmic equation? So what we need to do is substitute those answers back in the original logarithmic equation. So for negative 1 half, let's do this. Log base 5 of negative 1 half equals log base 5. And I can already stop. 
2 times negative 1 half plus 3 minus log base 5, but I'll write it all out and then we'll talk about it. Uh, 2 negative 1 half minus 3, and then I'm going to do all that math. But here's what I see already, and hopefully you can get used to seeing this as well. This is a logarithm that has no horizontal shift, or vertical shift for that matter, which means that negative 1 half for x, some negative value out here, is not valid. It's not within the domain of our logarithm. So no matter what these guys have, they have shifts and whatever, and it might be valid. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's not valid over here, so this is undefined. We're done with this negative 1 half. It's an extraneous solution. Okay? It's an extra solution that popped up because we solved this quadratic, but it's not valid for the original equation. So let's check out, what is it, 3 or negative 3? I can't remember. Slide down. 3. So now we're going to check out 3. So we get log base 5 of 3 is equal to log base 5 of 2 times 3 plus 3 minus log base 5 of 2 times 3 minus 3. And so we're going to get some number, log base 5 of 3, is equal to log base 5 of 2 times 3 is 6, plus 3 is 9, minus log base 5 of 2 times 3 is 6, minus 3 is 3. And so if we just do a little algebra, excuse me, a little logarithmic property type algebra, and we go log base 5 of 9 divided by 3, right? Because that was the property we used before. We get log, what's 9 divided by 3? 3. And so we get log base 5 of 3 is equal to log base 5 of 3. 3 works. And 3 happens to be our only solution then. Okay? So that's that second to last uh, example.